Okay, so uh, my name is Mike Prefer. I'm the new special teams coordinator of the Cleveland Browns, and it sounds really cool to say that because, um, you know, being from this area, I grew up a big Browns fan, Indians, Cavaliers, and uh, really excited to be here. A uh, huge opportunity, great time to be a Brown with the team that we have, and I want to thank the Haslam family and John Dorsey and Freddie Kitchens for bringing me and making me a part of this organization. And, you know, we got, uh, we have passionate fans here, and, and it's funny, I was in the Navy, and I'd be overseas and be in the Mediterranean, uh, in the Mediterranean somewhere, and I'd run into somebody wearing an Indian's hat or a Browns t-shirt, and, and uh, so I know there's fans all over the world that are passionate about their Browns, so it's really exciting to be here, and I'm, and I'm proud and, and, and happy to be a part of it. That's it? All right, we're good. Oh. How much, how much time did you spend in Cleveland before? I know you moved around a lot. How much yes. time did you spend here, and how often did you come back? So I still have family around here, aunts, uncles, uh, cousins. And, um, and it's funny you mention that because every time we would play the Browns when I was with different teams, they'd say, hey, Uncle Mike, or hey, um, you know, my, I'm a nephew or cousin or whatever. they say, hey, you know, hey, good luck. I hope the Browns win. You know, they were still cheering for their Browns. So I know, and any other family members, you know, my immediate family, they always cheer for, you know, whatever team I'm coaching for. But I spent my first uh, about 10 years of my life here, five in Middleburg Heights and, and five in Brunswick. My dad was the uh, head football coach at Padua Franciscan High School. So I kind of grew up around Padua and St. Anthony. In fact, he lived on 6850 State Road, right up on the hill there across the street from St. Anthony. Actually went to church there uh, a couple weekends, weekends ago, and that's the first time I'd been back since my grandmother's funeral, I don't know, 26, 27 years ago. So um, I have come back to this area when we've played the Browns or I've come up here for an Indians game in the summer or something like that. So I do have family still around. Did you, your contract was up with Minnesota. And yes. Did they want you to come back? Were you looking to go somewhere else? They, um, I kind of bet on myself. I let my contract rent out. Um, you know, Minnesota's a great organization, and we had a good run there. We had eight really good years there, and uh, I just felt like it was time to explore other opportunities. And when this one came up, you know, I had several interviews, and I had some other interviews set up. And when, when I came here and, you know, met with John, met with Freddie, and was around the organization. I said, you know, this is the excitement and the buzz in the building right now. This is where I really wanted to be. Being from here helped, but it was really where I wanted to be. And I, you know, I believe they wanted me back. They offered me a contract, and uh, I just felt like this was the best spot for me and my family. What separates <coughs> um, special teams is really bad. I'm sorry, sir. The special teams here was really, you know, messed up. Uh, have you, were you in a situation before where they, you took over a special teams that just was not doing very well at all? And how quickly do you turn it around? Well, I and mean, you know, I'm not sure how bad they were last year. I know they, they, you know, they had their moments. They were pretty good. And other moments, they weren't as good. And um, when I first got to Minnesota, they were okay. And uh, you know, we were pretty good uh, right off the bat. I think what it boils down to is you need to have good players. Uh, you need to have players that love the game of football. And I'm going to tell these young guys when they get they get in the building here in April that, you know, you cannot be a good special teams player unless you're passionate about the game of football. If, if you just, you're out there for a paycheck, you're out there just to get by, you're out there, hey, I only want to play linebacker or running back, then first of all, you're not going to help our team win and you're certainly not going to help us on special teams. So if you have a passion about football, if you love the game, um, then I think you have a chance. If you're good enough and use, I, I tell guys, use the fundamentals and techniques we give you and then let God take over. You know, let the God-given talent that you've been given to, to, uh, to help you uh, play at a high level. So. Um, you know, how quickly can we turn around uh, our special teams? I think that's going to depend on our players and depend on how much they buy into what we're doing here. The, the culture that we had in Minnesota was outstanding. We had, I'm, I'm leaving a really good group of guys, and I've heard from a bunch of them and other people in the organization. It was tough to leave, but uh, I'm going to reiterate how excited I am to be here and, and, and to have this opportunity to, to help our football team win and win a lot of games. So what is your to uh, eliminate or minimize holding and a uh, block in the back yeah. on, on return. Well, the good thing is, uh, and there's a fine line there, you can overcoach it where guys are passive and they're not playing as fast and as hard as they can. Um, but what we've, what we've had the last two years in, in, in Minnesota is the uh, we were the least penalized special teams units in the league two years in a row. That's the mentality I'm, I'd like to bring here. And, and I think we're going to get that. Um, uh, I just we just hired an assistant, um, uh, Doug Coleman, who's going to work with me on special teams. He came from Dallas. He's been in Houston, and he's got the same mentality I do. We're going to play penalty-free football. We're going to play fast. We're going to play physical. We're going to play discipline. We're going to play with enthusiasm and passion, and we're going to help our football team win games. Um, 
I don't think that, you know, I, I don't want to go into a situation where I think, hey, we're going to go out and win every game for the Cleveland Browns. And that's, that's not our role on special teams. Our role is to go out there and be a weapon in all six phases, in, including field goal and field goal block. Be a weapon, play great complementary football, and at the end of the day, let's hope we win the game. And, and that's where our mentality is going to be as we train these young men. Your experience in the Navy obviously jumps out. Can you talk about the kinds of things you did and what you learned? Sure. Um, you know, being a coach's son, I learned that coaching is teaching. And then my experience in the Navy helped me become a better leader. I was a helicopter pilot, um, so I was an aircraft commander at the age of 25. I'm in charge of this helicopter, and I've got a co-pilot with me. i got some air crewmen in the back, and I had some incredible experiences in the Navy doing that. And being a division officer, I was, like I said, 24, 25, 26-year-old uh, young guy that was in charge of 50 enlisted men. And, and I had a chief petty officer that worked with me. And, and we had a bunch of young guys, and I loved it. Because what, what that trained me for is helped me become a better leader. I made mistakes like we all do at that age. And, and, um, but I learned a lot about myself as a leader. I learned about how to help uh, young men reach their goals and reach their full potential. And uh, at the end of the day, it was a great learning experience for me as a leader. And it helped me, and it helped me in my coach, in coaching career thus far. Can you talk about also what you learned from the suspension issue that took place in Minnesota? You know, I, it, so a situation occurred in Minnesota where I made a comment that I shouldn't have made, and I apologize for that comment. And I learned a lot from it. And what I learned is that, you know, just you can't say hurtful things about people, period, no matter where you are, no matter who you're talking to. What kind of uh, just influence was your dad throughout your life and has been? And is there a John Dorsey connection there that, that helped this come together? Yeah, so, um, you know, I've known John a long time. He actually played in Green Bay when I was a ball boy there. My dad, my, uh, I moved from uh, Chapel Hill, North Carolina to Green Bay, Wisconsin, if you can imagine, my senior year in high school. So I went from a, uh, <coughs> excuse me, a co-ed public school to an all-boys Catholic school. And I'm looking around, I'm like, what am I doing here? And it was really cold and really, and, and a lot of snow and, uh, being from Cleveland, you're used to the snow, but the cold was un unbelievable, kind of like it is in Minneapolis. Um, but my dad has been a huge influence on me as a, as a man, as a person, as a man, and as a football coach. And he was actually so much an influence that he was the best man at my wedding. Uh, he's just, and he's always been there for me. Uh, he's always been a great sounding board for me. He's been a great example for me. And one of the reasons I got into coaching um, after my naval career is because I saw the impact that my father had on young people's lives. And I've always had a passion for football. I've always loved the game of football. But I saw what he brought to the table in terms not just as coaching, and you know, like he said, coaching is teaching, but the impact that he had on people's lives. And it was, a, um, it was an easy decision for me when I, when I got out of the Navy. It was tough to leave because I love flying. And I love being a division officer. And I love, I love being around the, uh, that atmosphere. But you know, the, the decision to go into coaching was a quite easy one because of the influence that he had on me. You didn't know you would always become a football coach? No, I didn't. No, so when I was a young guy, I was a, uh, I was a big Civil War buff. I loved studying about the Civil War and, and just the, I guess, the romantic idea of that part of it. Um, so I told my father, I said, you know, when I graduate, it was probably my ninth, 10th grade year, I said, when I graduate high school, I want to join the Army. And he said, well, you got a pretty good grades. Why don't you... You know, see if you can get in one of the academies, and I had no idea. I said, what are you talking about? He said, Army, Navy, football. I said, oh, okay, that's what you're talking about. So uh, we, before my junior year, we took a trip up to West Point, took a, took a trip to Annapolis, and I said, this is where I want to be. And I was fortunate enough to get into Annapolis and, and graduated in 1989, went to flight school, loved flying. Uh, but we'd go on deployment, and, you know, guys would bring books or whatever they want to read, and I'd bring a playbook. I'd bring, my dad was coaching at Georgia Tech at the time, and here I am flipping through the defensive playbook at Georgia Tech for enjoyment rather than reading a book or whatever. So I kind of knew in the back of my mind that was going to be something I've, you know, always wanted to do. Did you, um, some guys really like being special teams coach. Mm -hmm. Jerry Rosberg, he's been one, yeah, one, of, one of the best in the league. Right. Yep. Um, so did you, do you have aspirations of being a head coach? Or are you one of these guys that want to really just make your name like Jerry Ross? Well, I, I mean, I've always had the, the passion to be a head coach. But what I've come to realize is that uh, I may not have that opportunity in the NFL. And you know what? That's OK. Um, my job right now is to be the best special teams coordinator that the Cleveland Browns can have. I want to be the best best teams coordinator that they've ever had. Um, I want to lead these young men in, in the area of special teams to help us win a championship. 
And I absolutely love coaching special teams. I wouldn't want to coach anything else and, and maybe someday be a head coach. That's fine. But that's not for me right now. What for me right now is to be the best special teams coordinator that the Cleveland Browns need me to be to help us win a bunch of games. Obviously, could certainly kind of label your special teams good or bad. You know, if you guys miss field goals all over the place or whatnot. What did you think of uh, Greg Joseph? You know, first of all, um, special teams is six phases, and I understand where you're coming from. I understand that completely, and I've been there before. It, it is glaring when a guy misses a kick, I've, and I've lived it. Um, we could be great on special teams. You miss a field goal at the end of the game. You lost the game on special teams, and I don't believe that. But um, but going back to your question about Greg, uh, I would really like Greg coming out of college last year. Uh, Strong-legged kid. He you know, needs some technique work. I still think he needs some technique work, but there's something there. He, he's got a really big leg, and I think to kick in Cleveland, to go to Baltimore, to go to Pittsburgh, to go to Cincinnati, all these outdoor venues that I haven't been used to the past eight years, um, you're going to need a strong-legged young man. And um, So I like Greg. I like what he brings to the table. I think he's got a chance to be a really good kicker. Uh, will we bring in competition for him? I'm not sure yet. We haven't had those discussions. But um, at the end of the day, I think he's got a chance to be pretty good, and, and I did like him coming out. Did you, did you seriously consider a career in the Navy? Did you I did. I did. Um, so about 1997, I'd been a GA at, at the Naval Academy. So I went back to Na the Naval Academy for my shore duty, which was not the best career move. Uh, I was told that was uh, not a good career move, but I wanted to give coaching a chance. I kind of backdoored my way into coaching and uh, probably made my Navy superiors upset that I did that instead of focusing on the Navy. But um, I thought real serious about doing it. So in 97, when I got out of the Navy, you know, I was just got a job with Coach Trestle at Youngstown State, uh, which was a phenomenal experience for me. Won the 97 National Championship. It was a really, really cool deal. Uh, but there was part of me that wanted to stay in. There's part of me that wanted to go fly helicopters in the FBI, and there was part of me that wanted to go coaching. And to be honest with you, I'm glad the coaching won out. So I'm really excited to be here and, and excited about the future of the Cleveland Browns.